Getting a representative sample, it's not easy and it's not even guaranteed. And that's why with inferential statistics, we can actually never say we proved a hypothesis as much as we like to. That is, anytime we select our sample, there's always the possibility that it might not be representative. Now let's say that I decide to personally pick a sample, let's say of size one, uh, in which to get an idea of the typical college student IQ. And so I go and I, I pick someone. It's very possible that unconscious bias may have influenced who I pick. Or if not this person, let's say I pick this person, or this person here. Maybe there's something going on that not even I'm aware of that's influencing who I'm picking. And so that's gonna get in the way of me getting a, a good representative sample. So if I want a representative sample, and let's keep it at the most simplest level, sample size one, then to get rid of this bias, the next best step up is random selection, where every single person would have an equal chance of being included in my sample. So let's say that I go with a random selection of one student to get an idea of the typical college student IQ. We'll say that IQ of college students is normally distributed. And for sake of discussion, we'll go with the mean IQ of 116 and a standard deviation of 16. So with the mean of 116 and a standard deviation of 16, we have our measure central tendency right here at 116 with, let's say, most college students right there. That's our highest frequency. And as you go into a higher IQ, there's fewer students. And as you go even further higher IQ, uh, less students. And same with lower IQs. Well, at what point would we consider a college student not representative of the general college student? At what point would we say, that person is not representative? Well, let's just say that we put that at plus and minus two standard deviations. Well, if we go with that definition, that if you're more than two standard deviations above the mean, you're not representative. And if you're less than two standard deviations below the mean, you're not representative. We would say if you happen to randomly pick a college student whose IQ is between 84 and 148, that student is at least somewhat representative of all other college students. But that if the college student's IQ is 148 or more, well, let's say like 149, or if the college student's IQ is you know, 83 or, or some other value here in the shade region, the college student is not representative. Well, in that case, what's the probability, even though we're using random selection, that our sample, size one, is not representative? To answer that question, we would have to go to a Z table. A Z table uh, is a table where you determine how many standard deviations the value is away from the mean and it'll give you the area under the curve that corresponds. So 84 is two standard deviations below the mean, so it's a z-score of negative two. 148 is two standard deviations above the mean, that corresponds to a z-score of uh, positive two, because it's one, two standard deviations above the mean. So here we're looking at a z-table, and the shaded area is the proportion that can be looked up in the z-table uh, for area beyond z, and we'll look up a z-score of 2.00. So here we go. Z-score 2.00. Here's a z-score of 2.000. That proportion is 0.023. That is, it's saying that this shaded area, uh, sorry, beyond z would be 0.023. So the proportion of people uh, that we might randomly pick who would not be representative, uh, we have 0.023 for those people who are two generations above the mean. And we have 0.023 for those people who are two standard deviations below the mean. If we add up those two proportions, the 0.023 plus 0.023, our combined area, these two red areas, where we'd say someone is not representative, is 0.046. That is about 4.6% of the time we might randomly select someone who is not representative. Thus, the probability of not being representative, as we've defined it here, is 0.0. Four, six. Okay, I hope this helped you in thinking about how random selection does not always give you a representative sample. We'll learn more how this applies to larger sample sizes. Take care.